हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल सो इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोन टू डिस्कस अबाउट दी थियरीज ऑफ ग्लोबल पॉलिटिक्स सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग मोर टाइम लेट्स बिगे सो टूडे वी विल फोकस ऑन दी रियलिज्म एंड न्यू रियलिज्म सो नो वन सीज द वर्ल्ड जस्ट एज इट इज ऑल ऑफ अस लुक एट दी वर्ल्ड थ्रू अ वेल ऑफ थियरीज प्री सपोजिशन एंड अजम्पन इन दिस सेंस ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड इंटरप्रिटेशन आर एक्सट्रीकेबली बाउंड टूगेदर when we look at the world we are also engaged in in uh, imposing meaning on it this is why theory is important it gives shape and structure to an otherwise shapeless and confusing reality the most important theories as far as global politics is concerned have come out of the discipline of international relations which has spawned a rich and increasingly diverse range of theoretical traditions the dominant mainstream perspective within the field have been realism and liberalism each offering a different account of the balance between conflict and cooperation in world affairs so why do realists believe that global politics is characterized by unending conflict while liberals have believed in the possibility of cooperation and enduring peace and why have realist and liberal ideas become more similar over time however from the 1980s onwards especially uh, gaining impetus from the collapse of communism and the end of the cold war a series of new theoretical voices has uh, have emerged now let's see some mainstream perspectives see the key mainstream perspectives on global politics are realism and liberalism as the discipline of international relations took shape following world war first it drew particularly heavily on liberal ideas and theories so especially about the desirability of conducting international politics within a framework of moral and legal norms from the late 1930s onwards such as uh, liberal ideas were subject to increasing criticism by realist theory who highlighted what they saw as the divided as the inescapable realities of power politics this established international relations as a divided discipline a battleground between liberalism and realism with the latter increasingly dominating uh, the academic study of the subject from 1945 onwards now let's see what is realism or what do you understand by realism so realism sometimes called political realism claims to offer an account of world affairs that is realistic as you know we had already discussed about this in the sense that is hard headed and as realists see it devoid of wishful thinking and deluded moralizing for realists global politics is first and last about power and self interest this is why is often portrayed as a power politics model of international politics as hans morgen too put it politics is a struggle for power over men and whatever its ultimate aim may be power is its immediate goal and the modes of acquiring maintaining and demonstrating it determine the technique of political action right so the theory of po uh, power politics is based on two core assumptions as we uh, as we know the people are essentially selfish and competitive meaning that egoism is the defining characteristic of human nature second the state system operates in a context of international anarchy in that there is no authority uh, higher than the sovereign state so the core theme of realist theory can therefore be summed up in the equation egoism plus anarchy equals power politics some have suggested that this formulation betrays a basic theoretical fault line within realism dividing it into two distinct schools of thought one of these classical realism explains power politics in terms of egoism while the other neo realism or structural realism explains it in terms of anarchy however these alternative approaches reflect more a difference of emphasizes within realism rather than a division into rival schools as the central assumptions of realism are common to most realist theories even though they may disagree about which factors are ultimately the most important so the key themes
Within realism are as follows: first, state egoism and conflict; state craft and the national interest; international anarchy and its implications; polarity, stability, and the balance of power. Now we will see state egoism and conflict. So, in basing their theories of politics on a pessimistic but allegedly realist. model of human nature classical realists have worked within a long and established tradition of thought which can be traced back to thucydides account a uh, thucydide account of the peloponnesian war and to sun tzu classic work on strategy the art of war written at roughly the same time in china other significant figures included machiavelli and thomas hobbes machiavelli's theory of politics was based on a darkly negative model of a changeless human nature in his view humans are insatiable arrogant crafty and shifting and above all malignant iniquitous violent and savage on this basis machiavelli argued that political life is always characterized by inevitable strife encouraging uh, political leaders to rule through the use of cunning crudely and manipulation okay now we will see state egoism and conflict so in basing their theories of politics on a pessimistic but allegedly realistic model of human nature classical realists have worked within a long and established tradition of thought which can be traced back to thucydides account a uh, thucydide account of the peloponnesian war and to sun tzu classic work on strategy the art of war written at roughly the same time in china other significant figures included machiavelli and thomas hobbes machiavelli's theory of politics was based on a darkly negative model of a changeless human nature in his view humans are insatiable arrogant crafty and shifting and above all malignant iniquitous violent and savage on this basis machiavelli argued that political life is always characterized by inevitable strife encouraging uh, political leaders to rule through the use of cunning crudely and manipulation hobbes thinking was also based on a pessimistic view of human nature he argued that humans are driven by non rational appetites aversions fears hopes and desires the strongest of which is the desire for power after power as no single person or group is strong enough to establish dominance and therefore a system of orderly rule over society a condition that hobbes referred to as a state of nature an ongoing civil war developed between all members of society life in the state of nature would thus be solitary poor nasty brutish and short according to hobbes the only way of escaping from the barbarity of such a society would be through the establishment of a sovereign and anarchy liberal power that is by the creation of a state now the question is how did such thinking shape the understanding of international politics in the first place as realist accept that no form of world government can ever be established it meant that politics is conducted within what is in effect and international state of nature the international arena is therefore dangerous and uncertain with order and stability always being the exception exception rather than the rule so second one is whereas machiavellian hobbes were primarily concerned to explain the conduct of individuals or social groups so realist international theories have been concerned above all within the behavior of states right uh, realist view state as coherent and cohesive units and regard them as the most important actors on the world stage so realist theories of international politics it's uh, are thus firmly state centric third and critically the fact that states are composed of and led by people who are inherently selfish greedy and power seeking means that state behavior cannot but exhibit the state uh, the same characteristics so human egoism therefore determines state egoism or is more again to put it uh, the social world but a projection of human nature onto the collective plane right 
okay another point is statecraft and the national interest see although realism is often associated with the attempt to understand international politics from an objective or scientific standpoint it also acknowledges the important role played by statecraft for example in his analysis of the 20 years crisis that came between world war 1 and world war 2 e h car criticized the leading uh, figures at the paris peace conference of 1919 to 20 for, for uh, allowing wishing a prevail over thinking by neglecting the importance of power in international politics they had set the world on an inevitable course to further conflict so morgan too similarly placed an emphasis on the art of statecraft arguing that the practical conduct of politics should nevertheless be informed by the six principles of political realism spelled out as follows first uh, politics is governed by objective laws which have their root in human nature second the key to understanding international politics is the uh, concept of interest defined in terms of power third the forms and nature of state power will vary in time place and context but the concept of interest remains consistent fourth universal moral principle do not guide state behavior although this does not rule out an awareness of the moral significance of political action fifth moral aspirations are specific to a particular nation there is no universally agreed set of moral principles sixth the political spheres is autonomous meaning that the key question in international politics is how does this policy affect the power of the nation so the key guide to statecraft in the realist tradition is a concern about the national interest okay now next topic is anarchy and its implications see from the 1970s onwards new thinking uh, within the realist tradition started to emerge which was critical of early or traditional realists the key text in this process were kenneth walls theory of international politics for walls theories about international politics could be developed on three levels of analysis the human individual the state and the international system uh in this light the defect of classical realism was that it could not explain a uh, behavior right at a level above the state which is a limitations of any endogenous or inside out theory okay so uh using system theory systems theory neo realism or more specifically structural realism explains the behavior of states in terms of the structure of the international system so as as such neo realism is an exogenous or outside in theory one in which the behavior of actors is explained in terms of the outside the context or structure in which they operate of global politics so in shifting attention from the state to the international system it places an emphasis on the implications of anarchy so the characteristics of international life stem from the fact that state and other international actors operate within a domain which has no formal central authority but how does this shape behavior and why according to neo realist does international anarchy tend towards conflict rather than cooperation so neo realist argue that international anarchy necessarily tends towards tension conflict and the unavoidable possibility of war for three main reasons so in the first place as states are separate autonomous and formally equal political units they must ultimately rely on their own resources to realize their interest international anarchy therefore results in a system of self help because states cannot count on any else to take care of them second relationships between and uh, among states are always characterized by uncertainty and suspicion so this is best explained through the security dilemma although self help forces state to ensure security and survival by building up a uh, sufficient military capacity to deter other states from attacking them such actions are always liable to be interpreted as hostile or aggressive uncertainly about motives therefore forces states to treat all other states as enemies meaning uh, that permanent insecurity is the inescapable consequence of living in conditions of anarchy third 
conflict is also encouraged by the fact that states are primarily concerned about maintaining or improving their position relative to other states that is with making relatives gains so apart from anything else this discourages corporation and reduces the effectiveness of international organizations because although all states may benefit from a particular action or policy each state is actually more worried about whether other states benefit more than it does although such neorealist thinking had a profound impact both within and beyond the realist traditions since the 1990s realist theories have often attempted to fuse systems analysis with a unit level approach giving rise to what has been called neo classical realism or post neo realism okay now let's discuss about the polarity stability and the balance of power see however the fact that states are inclined to treat other states as enemies does not inevitably led to bloodshed and open violence rather neo realist in common with classical realist believed that conflict can be contained by the balance of power a key concept for all realist theories however while classical realist treat the balance of power as a product of prudent statecraft neo realist see it as a consequence of the structural dynamics of the international system and specifically of the distribution of power or we can say that capacities between and among states so in short the principal uh, factors affecting the likely likelihood of a balance of power and therefore the prospect of war or peace are the number of great powers operating within the international system although neo realists believe that there is a general bias in the international system in favor of balance rather than imbalance world order is determined by the changing fate of great powers this is reflected in an emphasis on polarity okay neo realists have generally associated bipolar system with stability and a reduced likelihood of war while multipolar systems have been associated with instability and a greater likelihood of war so this inclined neo realist to view cold war bipolarity in broadly positive terms as a long piece but to warn about the implications of rising multipolarity in the post cold war era realist nevertheless disagree about the relationship between structural instability and the likelihood of war for so called offensive realist as the primary motivation of states is the equation of power if the balance of power breaks down as it tends to in conditions of multipolarity there is a very real likelihood that, uh, that war will break out defensive realist on the other hand argue that states tend to prioritize security over power in which case states will generally be reluctant to go to war regardless of the dynamics of the international system okay okay our another topic is liberalism we will discuss this topic in the next video so if you have any doubt feel free to ask any question to me and if you like this video please hit the like button and do share my video do subscribe my video for the more videos see you in the next video till then bye bye take care